Have you ever looked up at the night sky and wanted to photograph a nebula? Well, you're in luck because that's what we're gonna be doing tonight. Stick around and let's get started. Let me just preface by saying this. It's cold, it's light polluted, and it's full moon. What other amazing traits do you want me to add to the pot to make this just even more of a challenge? Oh wait, that's right, it's smoggy. <laughs> I mean, I just can't catch a break, it seems, but that's okay. Tonight, we're going after a relatively easy to capture target. It's a seventh magnitude bright emission nebula in the constellation of Cassiopeia, and it's called the Pac-Man Nebula. Now, this nebula is tucked up near the famous W shape of Cassiopeia. It's a bright emission nebula, which means that it's rich in hydrogen gases in this area of the night sky. Now, along with the star field close by, it creates a region that is a star forming region very similar to something like the Orion Nebula. Now the Pac-Man sits 10,000 light years away from us, so while we can't just go visit it on a whim, we can enjoy its beauty from afar. Now the telescope of choice for tonight is going to be the Celestron 9 and a quarter SCT. And what this telescope is going to deliver for us, coupled with a hyperstar, is f2.2 fast star imaging, which is way faster than the native f10 imaging that we would normally get if we don't use any optical accessories. Now the native focal length is f10, like I said, it's going to drop us to f2, which means from 2350 millimeters all the way down to 535 millimeters for this. That's it's going to open this up for a ton of light from this light polluted front yard in the city. But that's what we need. We need lots of light going to that camera chip and we need lots of light of the Pac-Man Nebula to really grab the detail and the colors within the nebula. So that is the key here to capturing in this environment tonight is that hyperstar. Now the Pac-Man Nebula itself is a relatively large target, so just because, you know, I have this big rig doesn't mean that you can't capture it too. In fact, anything up to 200 millimeters and higher is going to be perfectly acceptable. It all just depends on what you want to do with it, whether or not you want a wide field image, whether or not you want something a little bit closer and you see the structure a little bit closer. It's all up to personal preference because the Pac-Man is one of those targets that you can shoot really wide field and get a beautiful star field around it, or you can dial in that magnification and use just like a 0.6 focal reducer off the back here and get like 1300 millimeters or so and really get up close and personal with it as well if that's what you want to do. Tonight we're going to be using the ZWO ASI 183 MC Pro. This is a one-shot color dedicated astrophotography camera. Now the reason why I chose this is because it is a much smaller chip than what I normally use with my 2600. But what that's going to do for us is it has a ton of pixels packed into such a smaller chip, which is going to give us such a high resolution shot of this Pac-Man. When it comes to astrophotography, framing is very, very important. You want to make sure that the telescope you're using and the camera combinations frame the target exactly how you want to see it. Our secret weapon for tonight, though, however, is going to be that IDAS NBZ Nebula Booster Filter. This filter is specifically designed to only allow hydrogen and oxygen gas wavelengths to be shown through on the camera sensor. So it's perfect for light polluted and also full moon skies. Now this whole telescope rig tonight is going to sit on top of my brand new ZWO AM5. Now this is the first night I've had it out for a deep sky imaging run, so please give me good luck. 
because we all know that first light can be a hit or a miss. Now the AM5 is rated for up to 44 pounds of payload with counterweight off the front. Now we don't necessarily need a counterweight this time because we have the ability to take that payload without a counterweight, but just for safety reasons and the tripod, we're going to add that counterweight just so that the heavy momentum doesn't want to flip the tripod over, which of course is a concern if you have a heavy payload off the side with no counterweight to offset that balance.